4,000 emails that indicate Pakistan has a role to sponsor terror in India. With me on the show is Himanshu Roy, the new chief of the anti-terror squad of Maharashtra. Himanshu Roy, welcome on Headlines today. What is the evidence that India has that Pakistan sponsors terror? What are these 4,000 emails all about? These uh, emails uh, uh, are between uh, Yasin Bhatkal on the one hand and his handlers in Pakistan, Riyaz and Iqbal. The location of uh, the IP addresses shows that uh, these are all based, these, uh, his handlers are based in Pakistan. That is the immediate issue. In a larger perspective, we know that 2611 was sponsored by Pakistan. We know that the LET control room was in Karachi. We are aware that the training took place in LET camps in POK and in uh, Pakistan, Punjab. We have lots and lots of evidence, not just to suggest, but to clearly pin Pakistan as an exporter of terror. Uh, in fact, uh, many of the accused in Pakistan have been named as wanted accused in the chart sheet that we have sent in 2611. And it's not just us. It is also the Pakistani authorities themselves, the Federal Investigation Agency of Pakistan, which is doing its own 2611 investigation, which has arrested LET commanders who are responsible for the 2611 attack. Of course, this is uh, after international, considerable international pressure. Post-2611, uh, at this point of time, Abu Jindal is, is, in, in, is in custody. You've personally interrogated him. Yasin Bhatkal is in your custody. You've interrogated him. Does Pakistan, post-2611, till date, continue to sponsor terror? Is there evidence, sir? There is no doubt about it. There is little doubt about it. Uh, it's a war which works for them. It's, it's a low-intensity, low-cost war. They're bleeding us with a thousand cuts. And uh, they don't need to get into a high-energy, high-engagement kind of conflict with all its implications and costs and uh, they continue to do so to this very day. What is the direct evidence? Where in Pakistan are Riyaz Bhatkal and Iqbal Bhatkal? The, the IP addresses, have we shared this with the Ministry of External Affairs? Have they shared it with Pakistan? Are we, do you want government of India to put pressure on Pakistan to nail the Bhatkal brothers? And are you disappointed if this is not happening? I wouldn't say I'm disappointed because a lot of efforts are being made at all levels. Uh, we are not sure to what extent we can expect cooperation from the Pakistan authorities in this. The NIA has also filed a charge sheet against uh, Yasin Bhatkal in which the role of uh, the Pakistan handlers is clearly shown. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, uh, we are disappointed. It's, it's a long drawn out battle and we are willing to fight it. Okay. Is this state sponsorship of terror? Are these state actors or are these elements in Pakistan, perhaps non-state actors or is it very difficult to differentiate between the two? I think uh, any country which indulges in this kind of thing will always uh, try and have deniability. They will always try and stay one step away so that they can actually deny that they are involved in this. But if you put all the pieces together, it is state-sponsored terrorism. I was attending the Tahavar Hussein Rana trial in that Chicago courtroom. David Coleman Headley spoke of officers he'd met uh, of ISI in Pakistan and interacted with them. Uh, David Coleman Headley and Tahavar Hussein Rana also spoke of elements in India. In India, they were in touch with. Uh, have you been able to get to who these sleeper cells in India were? This is a question which uh, has been asked before and from the investigation that we have done in 2611 and from the interrogation of uh, suspects including Abu Jundal whom you mentioned, there doesn't seem to be any mole or any such uh, honeybee as was suggested. Uh, we have not been able to, at least I have not been able to interrogate uh, David Headley. As you know, he has uh, struck a plea bargain with the U.S. authorities and they've given him 35 years in prison. So it doesn't seem likely that we would be able to interrogate him in the near future. But from the pieces that we have been put together so far, there doesn't seem to be a mole. Okay. Uh, sleeper cells, because they traveled extensively uh, across the length and breadth of this country. They went to Kerala, they went to Madhya Pradesh, uh, came to Delhi. Who were they meeting with uh, their, their sleeper yes. cells? 
Well, uh, when any uh, terrorist is caught and interrogated, he does disclose uh, sleeper cells, uh, modules, sympathizers, and so on and so forth. And this is a continuous action which goes on uh, by uh, counter-terrorism agencies uh, in our fight against terrorism. So, yes, we are aware of the presence and uh, we have exposed a lot in the, in the last few years. Okay. Uh, you said, uh, Himanshu Roy, that 2611 perhaps was failure of imagination, uh, more than failure of intelligence. Uh, post-2611, what is the worst that we can imagine that these terrorists can do? Are we wargaming it? Yes, we are warming, wargaming it. We do realize that we need to really uh, stretch our imagination now. We need to uh, analyze much more and think much in a much more eclectic way about what they can possibly do. So we are considering uh, various uh, scenarios and uh, and uh, reconstructing those kind of war games which you which you talk about. And in that sense, yes, we are far more uh, prepared for for a different, more creative kind of attack. Okay, uh, Pakistan turns around and says, if there is actionable evidence, if there is prosecutable evidence, they will prosecute Hafiz Mohammed Said or Daud Ibrahim or others who may be involved in terror attacks. They say India gives literature, not evidence. And as somebody who's been in the police for over three decades, what is the evidence based on which Pakistan can prosecute a Hafiz Mohammed Said or a Daud Ibrahim or Riyaz and Iqbal Bhatkal or others who are sponsoring terror from Pakistan, fomenting terror from Pakistan? What is the direct evidence that is admissible in a court of law, sir? You know, uh, appreciation of evidence uh, can't be done uh, in uh, in a biased way. It can't be done in a convenient way. Uh, I suggested to you before that uh, Pakistan itself, their FIA, they launched uh, an investigation into 2611. They rounded up many suspects, including Zakir Rahman Lakwi and others. Uh, they hid Hafiz Said from international eyes for a long time. So, if there was really nothing against them, and if they had nothing to do with any of the terrorist acts in India, why did the House arrest them? Why did they arrest them? Why are they proceeding against them? Why are they sending judicial commissions here to collect evidence? So, part of it is no doubt because of international pressure. But, howsoever much international pressure is mounted, if there really is nothing, they won't do it. The fact is there is a lot of evidence. It's not just the way you look at it. We have given them DNA samples, for instance. They first denied that any of the 10 Fidayeen were Pakistanis. It's only when there was a DNA match which was done and we provided them really credible evidence which they could not deny that their foreign minister at an international forum accepted that, that uh, they were Pakistanis. They first denied that Kasab was a Pakistani. So uh, he had some kind of an eye card of a college in India which was fake and they said that's, that's the real uh, identity of Kasab. So this kind of thing does go on. Uh, any country, like I said, would like to have deniability because uh, it is extremely embarrassing to be caught in a situation where you're sponsoring terrorism, but this is a reality which we are facing. Now, we stop the enemy at the gates at times when the enemy has entered the gates. As the anti-terror squad chief of Maharashtra, do you think terror needs to be taken out at source? Is that where we need to move? Because here the chances of failing are much higher and the cost again much higher. You know, uh, since you cover defense and uh, foreign affairs, you have asked a very uh, interesting question. But precisely because you know both those uh, areas of government functioning, you will understand that Yes, it is true that terror must be knocked out from the root, from the source itself. But you will understand also the complications which can arise of a cross-border operation. Uh, it is not my station to suggest whether we should do that, whether we should cross a border and hit them uh, at the source, at the terror camps, etc. But uh, I am sure this is being considered by experts at the highest level. Himanshu Roy, as the chief of the anti-terror squad of Maharashtra, what is your biggest challenge given the situation, given the changing face of terror post your interrogation of both Abu Jindal and most recently of Yasin Bhatkal? I think, uh, well, I wouldn't say one biggest challenge, but amongst the challenges that we have, 
today is to get more and more actionable intelligence. We get a lot of intelligence. We do pick up uh, human technical intelligence. But to make it actionable, the next step, that is what the bridge which we are going to try and cross effectively so that, so that we are able to act on it in a, in, a, in a coordinated way, in an effective way to prevent terror attacks in future. You have a very tough task ahead of you, uh, the, the asymmetrical warfare that we are fighting, uh, the nature seems to be changing, but Himanshu Roy, many thanks for speaking to us Thank here you. and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Himanshu Roy, the anti-terror squad chief of Maharashtra, he knows the challenges are many, but he's a man who's up to the task.